A beautiful white-haired girl named Evangeline receives a blow to the cheek, causing her to scream loudly. She was hit by a lady, dressed in a noble manner, unlike her, who continues to scold her for sitting idle, although she was told to wash the rags. Suddenly the girl thinks as if she had just been born. She does not understand what kind of woman is scolding her and why she calls her Evangeline. At this moment another girl runs up to the main character. She hugs her for protection and asks the lady not to offend her friend. The woman calls the savior who runs up La Chera. The lady wonders why she is bothering with this strange girl. La Chera, not letting her friend out of the hug, angrily says that she is not strange at all. The woman, with hostility on her face, says that no one in the Shami Empire has such silver hair, and violet eyes were given to her by the devil himself. Hearing the words about the Shami Empire, Evangeline realizes that she has found herself in the world of her novel. The girl remembers that in a past life, she was the author of her first web novel called Yesterday's Servant Became the Crown Princess. The plot of her novella was quite classic. A girl who was a maid and the crown prince eventually got married. This was her first work posted on the internet, which unfortunately failed. But even so, the girl did not give up her dream of becoming a good writer. One day they called her and said that her work was simply wonderful, and if she continued to write, she would certainly become famous. After hearing this, the main character continued to write, overcoming her capabilities. At that time, her thoughts were only about the bright future that was to come after the publication of the novel. But suddenly, everything seemed to plunge into darkness, and the girl found herself in the world of a novel, like an eighth grader in her dream. Evangeline decides to check with her friend whether her name is La Chera. She says that this is so, and wonders why she asks, calling her Jelen. Hearing the name Jelen, the girl became excited and asked if this was her name in abbreviation. La Chera tells her that she is acting strange and suggests that she has another cold. Suddenly the main character runs away, leaving her friend and the rich lady alone with a lot of questions. Jalen runs into the room where she peers into the mirror. She was dumbfounded when she saw the hero of her novel in the reflection. Her silver hair, violet eyes, and pinkish lips could not leave even the most callous cracker indifferent. She is a villain who will take the place of the Ninth Queen with the help of her unsurpassed appearance, and with her own hands will try to kill La Chera. Jelen realizes that the girl who stood up for her earlier is La Chera. The main character is overcome with sadness because she has become the villain in her own short story, which moreover must kill the main character. From this day on, Evangeline's new story begins. She tried very hard, despite her background. And after her 14th birthday, the fateful day approached. Two years pass. Red Quarter. The man calls La Chera and Jelen to him. One of them will be the lucky one, adopted by a noble family. He is surprised that a girl who is not even worthy of being a maid will receive a noble surname. He calls the person who started this crazy. Jelen, having heard about the noble family, understands that Marquis Banan is a man who decided to acquire someone he likes. The girl recalls a scenario in which she, having become the banana's adopted daughter, suffered from violence. She decides that she must never go there. At this moment, La Chera approaches the main character and asks why she looks so unwell. Jeline doesn't answer her. La Chera says that their owner called them to his place and they need to go. She happily takes her friend along with her. Noticing the girl's kindness and sensitivity, Jelen realizes that in the future, she will become everyone's favorite main character. La Chera, grinning, reassures her friend that she will definitely be adopted because she is the most beautiful in the Red Quarter. Suddenly, the main character pulls her hand away from her, after which she admits that she really doesn't want this. La Chera does not understand her and says that she has always dreamed of this and that then she will be fed three times a day and dressed in expensive clothes. At this time, Evangeline is thinking that if she doesn't go, then her friend will be adopted, when she suddenly remembers that she is the main character of the story. She decides that she would never allow such a kind child to end up in such a terrible place. Jalen then says that she knows everything, although she may not believe her. She desperately asks her friend not to go there. Suddenly, a maid approaches the girls and reminds them that the owner called them and they urgently need to go downstairs. Seeing the maid's face, the main character remembers that in the novel, her name was Jessie. In her story, in addition to the cruel master, there was also this maid who loved to mock girls even more. A sly smile appears on Evangeline's face. She has come up with a plan that will help them both escape. She immediately fulfills it. Jelen turns to the maid with a proposal that she can become an aristocrat and they can help her with this. Jessie, of course, expresses her bewilderment at what the main character is telling her, to which she, slyly whispering, 
says that if she joins them for this song, she can also become a noblewoman. Then the girl, using her example, sings a song about spring, which they will need to perform in front of the owner. Jessie's maid says that she knows the song and that she can sing it. While the maid is rehearsing her performance, the main character asks Lashera not to sing the song so that they cannot be taken into the family. She is silent in response. Soon the girls were standing opposite Mr. Banan. He asks them to sing the song, Emperor of Spring, Emperor of Winter. Of the three, Jessie is the first to sing. And while she was singing, Jelen thought that this was Banan's daughter's favorite song, and if the maid sang well, she would be the one they adopted. But the first contender makes a mistake in the song, which causes shame and disappointment in the main character. Suddenly, Lashera decides to sing next. She brazenly rushed ahead of everyone, although Evangeline asked her not to do this. She perfectly sings a song about the coming spring, blooming flowers and flying petals. Jelen tries to stop her performance, because she doesn't want her friend to be taken into the family. The girl wanted to take her hand and lead her away, but she pulled her away painfully and continued to sing. After Lashera's wonderful performance ended, the gentleman happily announced that he was taking her into the family. The main character cannot allow herself to be sold, so she asks the man to take her too, because she also sings well. The gentleman asked about the white-haired girl, to which the servant replied that she was just an insignificant foreigner, and Lashera, in comparison with her, was a real angel. The gentleman thought for a while, after which he decided to take the most beautifully singing girl. Watching her friend being taken away, Jalen asks them to stop and take her instead of Lashera, but the master servant throws her painfully onto the floor, forbidding her to resist. The man orders Jessie to lock Evangeline in the attic and not allow her to eat or drink. The servant began to carry out the order, while the main character continued to take her departing friend. Suddenly, Lashera turns around and looks at Evangeline with such an ominous smile that she has never seen her before. Jalen remembered her words that she would definitely be adopted, thanks to her unique beauty. She just can't understand where the kind, kind, and bright girl who told her this has gone. Throwing the girl onto the floor of the attic, Jessie calls her stupid and says that she has just been betrayed. The maid explains to the main character that Lashera is not as kind as she always thought, because if it were so, she would have asked her to sing first. The girl says that Jalan herself remembered how the traitor said that she would be the first to be adopted, although this turned out to be a deception. Evangeline is furious that Jessie overheard them, to which she says that it doesn't matter anymore. The maid questions her about why, if they were both servants, it was Jelen who flew in so much and was given so little food. Jelen guesses that this is all because Shara is everyone's favorite protagonist, and she is the villain. But she tells Jessie that it's because she's a foreigner. She says that Shara used this to stand out from her background. The girl reflects that the betrayal of the main character is a plot twist that she never expected. However, noticing that the current story deviates from the original, Evangeline believes that La Chera can no longer be the main character. Suddenly, a pleasant realization comes to her. From now on, she is the main character. Lying on the wooden floor of the attic, the main character notices that six days have already passed. She is terribly hungry, but her bowl is empty. Then the girl remembers the changed plot of her novel after which she realizes that since her appearance the story began to change. In the original, only Shara could read and write, but now she is quite good at it. However, Evangeline from her web novel wasn't particularly skilled at anything. But now everything is different. Jelen always worked hard and laughed in the face of difficulties. And it all looked like she got the place of the main character. Then the girl thinks about Lashera, namely, whether she too has changed. If this is so, then Jeline does not understand how she could not have known about it. She strained her memory and remembered that Shara almost always looked at her with some kind of cold gaze. Also, the traitor often praised her in front of harlots, thereby provoking them. At that time, Jelen knew nothing, but now everything fell into place. Shara did not help, but used her. Having become fixated on the original plot, the main character admits that she didn't even notice it. Evangeline coughed a couple of times, then touched her forehead when she realized it was burning. Remembering the plot of the novel, the girl wonders if they have already begun to bully Lashera instead of her. Jelen doesn't understand why she feels so guilty. She realizes that she is no longer a writer, and from now on her name is Evangeline. However, she has less power than before, which makes her worry that she will be followed by history's biggest assholes. The main character decides to no longer wait for her death, but to make the most of life and do everything in her power. The girl decides to get out of the attic and take action, even if she has to rewrite the whole story. Arriving on a city street, Jelen does not remember what this place is, 
because its history was written a long time ago. However, some details emerge in her memory. The main character shudders in fear from the unexpected cry of a man who is driving someone away. Turning towards the sound, the girl notices a boy who says that he wants to buy perfume, but the seller does not let him in. Evangeline ran towards him without hesitation. For everyone else, this boy is a gray mouse, but she remembers him well. She recognized this boy as Thomas Whitaker, who in the story was her only opportunity to get out of rags to riches. A quarrel ensued between Toas and the man. The seller drives the boy away while he demands an apology from him. Toas makes the argument that he is really an aristocrat, but this is a secret, to which the man says that this is just nonsense and his parents could not raise him normally. The words about his parents affected the boy, and he hit his uncle hard in the stomach so that he fell to the ground. Seeing this, Jelen is surprised, after which she remembers that only one of the Whitakers can have such power. Children with mystical abilities, which only a few aristocrats receive at birth, are called gifted. The man, offended by Toas, says that he will immediately hand him over to the guards, after which he will finally feel all the charm of life. Suddenly, Jelen bursts into the conflict and orders the seller to stop because he was the first to start calling the boy's parents' names. He was taken aback and asked the stranger who she was, to which the girl replied that even if she told him, nothing would change. Then she, calling Thoas master, asks him with a slight smile if everything is okay with him. The boy was surprised that the girl was standing up for him, so he asked her who she was. Before answering, Jelen mentally prepares herself that everything will be fine, and she just needs to speak like the main character. In the end, she smiles innocently and says that she's just a village girl passing by. Toas contemptuously asks her why she should ask if he is okay if she is just a random passerby. The girl replies that this is because he is the only victim in this situation, and that this man did not recognize him as a person of noble blood because of the hair hidden under his cap. Jelen wanted to say that she knew about his origin, when suddenly the boy turned around and walked away, without even bothering to listen to her. The main heroine was angry at this attitude towards herself, because she hoped that he would at least ask her where she lived. But she does not give up hope and catches up with Toas. She tries to get to know him, even says her name first, but to no avail. Suddenly the young master stops and sternly asks Jelen, why does she need to know his name? The main character was embarrassed by this question, because in fact, she needs to find out his name in order to make friends with him and move to his home. The Whitaker family is more noble in the entire empire and has more influence than the entire ruling family. If Jelen is not adopted, she will not be able to survive. Toas, meanwhile, says that his brother taught him to be careful with strangers, after which he invites the girl to go home. For Evangeline, this boy turned out to be smarter than she thought, but then she wondered what he was like. Thomas Whitaker is ten years old. He loves puppies and is shy about his height, always reserved until it comes to his height or his mother. While the main character was thinking about what to say, a man approached the boy and pulled him by the collar. A handsome young man who looks like Thoas says he is glad he was able to find him. While the boy asked his brother to let him go, Mr. Whitaker Sr. asked who the little lady was standing next to him. Jelen covered her mouth with her hands when she realized that Thoas's older brother, Cadel Whitaker, had appeared. This man, nicknamed the Mad Dog of the Empire, is the Duke's successor. He underwent an initiation ceremony and at 18 became the youngest knight. He is the best friend of the Crown Prince the adoptive brother of the main character and her bodyguard. This is a character whose heart was torn between love and friendship. The main character admits that she wanted to make him handsome in the novel, but she never expected such a gorgeous result. Looking at Kaydel, Jelen realizes that perhaps her feelings are called that same dangerous attraction because he is a real ideal for her. The girl does not forget to introduce herself, elegantly calling herself Evangeline. She wanted to say that by chance she wanted to meet Thoas. However, Cadel interrupts her, saying that it was not just an accident, but he saw how she purposefully followed his brother. Then he asks who sent her here. In response, the girl says that she just wanted to meet Thoas because she liked him. Cadel says that he doesn't believe her words, to which Jalen viciously denies that anyone sent her and that she never left the Red District. The words about the Red Quarter seriously alarmed the man. He looked at the girl with a different look. The Red Quarter almost always evoked the same reaction among the nobility. Everyone looked at its inhabitants with contempt. The women here were available to anyone for a price, and little girls, like the main character, were subjected to terrible violence and sold into slavery. All these outrages happened, and no one cared about the ban on human trafficking. Toas asked his brother what the Red Quarter was, 
to which he replied that it was too early for him to know about it. Then the young researcher asked Evangeline to tell her what it meant. However, Cadel hit Jelen on the hand and forbade her to tell her brother about this nonsense. The girl also became angry because of the pain in her arm, and the men began to leave her. But the main character stops them, saying that they have no reason to suspect her, after which she apologizes for introducing herself as a girl from the village. She adds that she's going to go overboard and say the following. She is glad to see such care towards her brother. But Toas will still have to talk about the Red Quarter someday, because this is a problem that will not disappear by itself. The girl says that if they continue to engage in self-deception, they will never be able to understand themselves. Kadel smirks at Evangeline and asks her if she is sure of her words. In response, the main character asks for forgiveness for the fact that she should not have said such a thing to the nobility and offers to notify the guards if she somehow offended him. The young man wanted to tell her something else, but she decided to bow first and then leave them. Moving away from the men, Jelen peers at her trembling hands. She understands that she did everything possible, but if she does not end up in the Whitaker family, then the story will end badly for her. She can't believe that she caught the eye of the mad dog of the empire right before the slave auction. The girl wonders if she will be okay if she continues like this. The main character recalls that in the original, everything turned out differently. Shara accidentally helped Toas. And thanks to his week-long whims, Cadel nevertheless agreed to go straight to the Red Quarter in search of her. The same thing should have happened today with Jelen, but for unknown reasons, this did not happen. Suddenly, the girl grabs Jessie by the hair and asks what she is doing here. The maid thinks that she wants to be whipped again, so she throws her basket of flowers to the side and drags her along. Jalen's eyes well up in tears at what is happening. This time, Jessie punishes her more painfully. The suffering of the main character is stopped by Kadel, who unexpectedly appeared nearby. He asks to let the girl go. Jessie did not immediately obey his order, but first contemptuously asked why she would suddenly do this, to which the duke replied that she was in pain. The maid then says that this does not concern him at all and asks the man to leave. However, Cadel is not going to back down. He threateningly says that he will not understand anything that she cannot fulfill his order, after which he pulls her hand away from Jalen's hair. The man then says that if the girl gets hurt, others will get hurt too. He asks to be taken to their owner. Jessie was surprised by the master's rudeness and reminded him that Evangeline was a simple slave and did not need to be protected. Kaidel agreed with her words and added on his own that the girl is a very impudent slave who is trying to teach the aristocrats. The main character, meanwhile, blushed like a tomato from the duke's beauty. He noticed this and grinned, after which he reminded the girls that he wanted to see their owner. The trio walked towards him. Once in the owner's house, Kaidel, with complete determination and severity, tells him that he wants to buy Evangeline, to which the man repeats once again that she is not for sale and asks the gentleman to come in a month when the auction begins. Kaidel, looking at the girl, says that such a time frame is too long and his brother will not stand such a long wait. In response, the owner furiously tells the man a well-known fact, which he probably did not know. You can only buy it during an auction. Whitaker Sr. says it's funny to hear that, knowing about Marky e. Bannon's recent visit. The owner was surprised, because he did not expect to hear such a thing, while Kaitel wondered why he saw the Marquis crew nearby the other day. The owner did not argue further with the Duke, but guiltily lowered his head and declared that now he would give him Evangeline. But he says the demand for it was already high, and in light of Cadel's wishes, the price has increased even more. He asks how much he wants for Jelen. After the owner named the price of 600 gold, the main character's hair immediately stood on end, because this is a lot of money. The girl remembers that in the original, the duke could have paid a much larger sum, but she's still embarrassed by such a price. Suddenly, Cadel offers to negotiate the amount, which leads Jelen and the owner to be shocked that the duke's heir is trying to lower the price. The owner begins to give arguments in his favor, Evangeline is perhaps the most beautiful girl in the empire, and no one can compare with her. Silver hair that shines like the sky, and beautiful violet eyes, make her appearance comparable to that of a magnificent fairy. Whitaker Sr. agrees with his words, but points out the girl's thinness and her body, strewn with bruises and abrasions. Jelen guesses that no one will pay 600 gold for a beaten slave, and is surprised at Cadel's thrift. Then the Crown Duke offers to make a purchase for five gold, to which the owner asks him not to joke so stupidly. The man furiously says that such an offer does not suit him, because he bought Evangeline for fifty gold, and then raised her for many years. However, Cadel advises the man to be honest, and admit that he did not care about her, but only used her for his own purposes. 
Putting the coin on the table, the young gentleman tells the owner not to worry about payment, because this money is not payment for the girl. Swinging his fist at the man using magic, he says that these are funds that will be allocated for his treatment. The Crown Duke struck the man in the stomach, causing him to fall painfully to the floor. The main character is surprised by the strength of the gifted. Even such a weak blow caused such enormous damage. Kaydel at this time, kicking the owner's body with his foot, wonders if he fell back, because his death would be quite problematic for him. The girl, seeing such a funny picture, could not restrain herself and laughed loudly. The Duke was embarrassed by her reaction, but made excuses that death really does bring a lot of trouble. Jelen says that she would like him to hit the owner harder. After this, Kaydel, admitting that he was a little late with the question, asks the girl if she is really a slave. Jalen says that she herself was tormented by doubts about this, then wonders if he wanted to lower the price because he did not believe it. He asks for forgiveness to the girl and extends his hand to her. She reacts to this reluctantly. The man says that she has nothing to worry about and can trust him. The girl gives him her pen, but asks Caden if he has forgotten that she is just a cheeky slave. But suddenly, the Crown Duke reassures the girl that while she is next to him, no one dares to call her that. Evangeline admires the beautiful landscape, which she views from the Duke's carriage, which is traveling to his palace. The girl is also delighted with Duke Whitaker's mansion. It turned out to be much larger than she had imagined. Jalen suggests that their family has power that can only be compared to that of the royal family. The Luna Wolves are the strongest order of knights in the entire empire, and the Moon Ravens Intelligence Service also reports to the Whitakers. And for the common people, the Duke's family is like heroes of the empire. Jalen smiled shyly when she realized that she was now sitting opposite Kaydel, who was the heir to this noble family. The man noticed her gaze and asked if everything was okay. The girl just turned away as if nothing had happened. Then the main character decides to ask Kaydel if he was watching her when they met at the market. He says that he does not understand her. The girl explains that his appearance could not have come at a better time, and then he followed her when she had to sneak away. She then asks how he knew where she was, to which Kaydel briefly replied that it was a secret. Upon arrival at the palace, Jelen was very surprised that the servants greeted them with their heads down. The Crown Duke asks the butler why Toas is not meeting him either, to which he replied that he is busy with a letter as they ordered. Kaydel says the punishment for visiting the city without his knowledge is too simple. The butler states that Thoas is also forbidden to eat his favorite steak. The elder brother is pleased with this, because this is already a cruel punishment. Evangeline, meanwhile, hears words that pleasantly please her. The duke says that from now on, she will become part of their family. Jelen, imagining Thoas on his knees, inviting her to become his sister, and how they were happily spending time together, beamed at such good news. But her joy did not last long. Kaydel says that she will take the place of Elias's assistant. The girl remembers that Elias is the same alchemist who was recognized by the entire royal family. The main character was no less glad to become an assistant to such a great man. She looked at the servants, who also seemed shocked. Suddenly, a solemnly dressed man approaches Jelen and asks if she has any abilities in alchemy. Kaydel thought for a moment, then ordered the man to direct the arriving guest to Elias, then prepare her room and introduce her to Madame Phil. The main character hoped that she would become the lady of their family, but now she believes that this is no longer important and that she needs to be a worthy assistant and then everything will be fine. The butler offered to accompany her, calling her his mistress, to which she said that he didn't have to address her like that because she didn't deserve it. The man says that he cannot afford it because this is the first time for the young master. He promises that she will understand everything soon. Jelen, accompanied by the butler, was looking at the rich mansions of the mansion when suddenly it seemed to her that she heard a strange sound nearby. She notices a man with long turquoise hair behind her. He apologizes to the clueless girl for offending her. The stranger, shedding tears, apologizes again and says that he did not expect to see her in this world. The man lets him know that he knows that the main character's name is Evangeline, to which she asks whether they know each other at all. The green-haired man says that he cannot not know her, but the girl could not understand the argument that he said in this favor. Jalen wanted to say something, but the stranger suddenly disappeared as if he had never existed. The butler approached her, who was also confused about what had happened. The main character decides that she just imagined it, so she asks the man for forgiveness. He says that everything is fine, because she is tired. The butler showed the girl off and then presented her with her room. He hopes that she will be able to rest in it. Evangeline looks at her wealth with her mouth open, then tells the butler that she has a strange feeling. Before answering the question, 
the man asks the girl to simply call him Hans. The guest agrees with this. Jalen says she feels like this room was created especially for a princess. The butler says that this is true, and that the princess once stayed here when she visited the count. The girl became embarrassed and said that she did not dare occupy such a room, to which he said that if she settled here, then everyone would be happy. Looking at the expensive dishes, the main character admits that she feels guilty moving into such a luxurious room. Suddenly she feels something is wrong, and soon it dawns on her what it is. She remembers the green-haired man, how he apologizes to her, and says that he could not think that her soul would inhabit Evangeline's body. He doesn't know how she managed to do this, but he knows that she is the author of the web novel, Yesterday's Servant Becomes the Crown Princess. Covered in cold sweat from fear, the main character suddenly realizes who she is. The girl is at a loss to understand how she could forget this and who the man with turquoise hair was. She wonders if she will meet him again, but realizes that she absolutely does not want this to happen. Suddenly, Jelen is frightened by the dark fragments that suddenly rain down from above. The butler approaches her, and she, who thought that she would now be punished for making noise, began to cover her face with her hands and ask for forgiveness. But in reality, the man only bent down at her feet to see if she was hurt. He is glad that everything is fine with the lady. Hans wanted to calm the girl, who might have been very frightened, when suddenly a woman bursts into the room and furiously calls the butler. The woman sternly asks the man if he scared the cute girl, which he flatly denies. She then bows elegantly before the main character and introduces herself. Her name is Phil, and she is the head maid of the Whitaker Mansion. Jelen bows after the maid. She excitedly tells her her full name. Phil is touched by the young mistress's well-mannered manners and says that she is much nicer than they say about her. Evangeline says it's all because of her looks, while the maid says she's charming, but her way of speaking is very old-fashioned. Phil then asks the girl if she likes her room. She says that she is beautiful, but such a room is too big for her. In fact, Evangeline thinks that she is too big for her. She admits that a smaller room would suit her. The maid smiled, then said that the main character seems to be an ordinary girl whom the master deigned to bring here, but everything is not so simple. Her words were supported by the butler Hans, who had just brought a snack for the girl, but she kicked him out the door and advised him to mind his own business. Having escorted the man out the door, Phil suggested that Jelen begin to take a hot bath. The main character recalls that in the red quarter, she did not have the opportunity to wash herself after she sweated, and on cold days, it was easier for her to stay hungry than to walk dirty. A moment emerges from her memory of how she just wanted to wash herself with warm water, but the owner noticed this. He mercilessly threw the girl out into the cold street, shouting that such a dirty girl as she did not dare to imitate the aristocrats. Jelen asked for forgiveness for her action, but the man did not listen to her and sprinkled snow from head to toe. The child was left shivering in the cold, without the opportunity to even wash his hands. Evangeline remembered all this while sitting in a warm bath. Maid Phil helps her bathe. She says that she likes to take a warm bath and that this is her first time doing it, although it sounds strange. Phil is happy for his mistress. The main character is having fun because she feels like she has become a real princess. While the mistress was saying how much she liked everything, the maid noticed a large number of scratches and bruises on the girl's back. This upsets the woman so much that tears well up in her eyes. When Jelen asked why she was crying, she brushed it aside that there was nothing wrong with it. After wiping away his tears, Phil jokingly says that the older she gets, the more she cries and asks Evangeline for forgiveness. The girl guessed what caused her tears and reassures the maid that her wounds no longer hurt. She says she is glad to hear this. Phil says she is proud of Jeline because she has had a very difficult life and her whole body is covered in bruises and abrasions. But the woman is hopeful that she doesn't have to be afraid now that she's in their Whitaker mansion. Therefore, the maid says that from now on the girl should eat well in order to grow up as a beauty. She promises that all her suffering will disappear and the main character will have a wonderful future. Jeline didn't say anything, but simply burst into tears in front of Phil, who was one of the first to treat her kindly. Looking at her mistress in a new image, the maid cannot stop admiring her and does not believe that such a beauty can live in the world. Stopping in front of the mirror, the woman asks the girl to greet her new self and say, Hello, little angel. Peering at herself in the reflection, Evangeline cannot understand why everyone calls her an angel, although everyone knows perfectly well who she used to be. However, Remembering Kadel's words that no one dares call her a servant, the girl gained optimism because she really is no longer a servant. She, looking at herself in the mirror, blushed red with embarrassment while the maid examined her back. 
Suddenly, the woman notices a mark of a cat's paw on her shoulder blade and wonders where she got it from. The girl says that this is her mole with such an unusual shape that it looks more like a mark. Phil is touched by her peculiarity and admits that she also has a mole, but unlike her, it is large and disgusting, similar to some kind of beetle. Jelen remembers that she used to be teased about her cat's paw mole, but Madame Phil said it was very cute. The main character realizes that she is very kind to her, so she also wants to be honest with her. The girl tells the maid that even if her mole looks like a bug, it is still beautiful. The young lady's words made the woman smile. Phil hugs Evangeline gratefully. Jalen, addressing Phil as Madam, asks if everything is okay. The maid asks her to simply call her Phil because she wants to make friends with her. At this moment, the main character remembered her school days when even ordinary sweets or pictures with her favorite idols could make her smile. Sometimes you meet a person who understands you better than your own parents. Her classmate Hai Jung was such a person for her. That's why Jaylin sometimes feels like Madame Phil and Hai Jung are the same person. The main character agrees with the woman's proposal to call each other simply by their first names. Phil was happy about this and wanted to say that now the girl was ready to do any task, but there was a knock on the door. The butler entered the room and said that the Duke was already expecting the young lady. Walking down the corridor, Jelen notices a huge portrait of Brian Whitaker, the head of the Whitaker family on the wall. He is a hero of the Empire who prevented the Triberian invasion. But Evangeline understands that despite all his merits, he is a very ordinary person. She remembers writing about him and his relationship with animals. But the girl decides to put her thoughts aside and first greet him properly. Behind the open doors, she sees a set table at which the Whitaker family is sitting. In the middle of the table sits the same Brian Whitaker, who frowns puzzledly towards the arriving guest. Toas tells his father that this is the same Evangeline who stood up for him when the store owner insulted him and his mother. The head of the family silently and abruptly stood up from his chair, which made the main character begin to get nervous. Brian leaned close to the girl and asked if her name, as they say, was really Evangeline. Jelen is overcome with fear and sweat, but she decides to pull herself together and greet the man normally. She, bowing her head as low as possible, says that she is glad to meet the head of the Whitakers and introduces herself by her name. But there was a deathly silence in the hall, which frightened her even more. Jelen, in her thoughts, begged the man to say at least something. Suddenly, something happened that she couldn't even imagine. Brian lifted the girl high to look at her. Having looked at Evangeline, the father admires her and tells Kaydell that he has brought a very cute child. She cannot believe that Duke Whitaker himself is doing this to her. Brian smiles at the girl. He likes her noble colors that nature has endowed her with, silver and purple. Jelen was glad to hear the compliment in her direction, but she was embarrassed and asked the head of the family why he didn't eat, but just stared at her. The Duke was even more moved by the main character when he realized that she was worried about him. Cadel did not like his father's behavior, while he says that he will eat more slowly so that there is enough food on the table for the guest, who has become thin. Then the man wanted to ask the butler to bring more food for Jelen, but she said that what was on the table was enough for her. The father's behavior begins to irritate the Crown Duke. He asks him to stop fooling around, because the girl is not like their cat Min Min. Brian agrees with his son's words and asks Evangeline's permission to call her Lin Lin. Such pampering by her father surprised the main character and infuriated Kaydell, whose patience was already hanging by a thread. Jalen was sweating with excitement. She was reluctant to answer the question whether she liked this nickname or not. The Crown Duke, having lost all patience, gets up from his chair and shouts to his father to stop. Kadel and Brian exchange angry glances, as if before a duel. The father scolds his son for daring to challenge him again. Calling his son a sucker, the Duke says that he hasn't kicked his ass in a long time and that he mistakenly believes himself to be the best in the Empire. He replies that he is definitely strong enough to fill him with nuts. Brian warns Kadel that he better not provoke him, because he will destroy him without it. He, having become on combat readiness, chuckled and said that he would still see who would destroy whom. Evangeline, who is watching the circus, cannot understand how it came to this and whether everything will be fine with them. At this time, Toas offers her to eat a bun and tells her not to worry because this happens every two days. Jelen gladly takes the bun and expresses hope that the men were not planning to fight in earnest. The boy says that this time everything can be for real, to which she is surprised because this will happen right in the dining room. He says that Brian and Kaydell don't care where they fight. The last time these two fought right at the Emperor's reception, the main character is interested in why they need this at all. Toas says that his brother pretends that he is a duke, 
because he knows that dad has a lot of work. And the father fights simply because he wants to quickly transfer all the responsibilities to his brother. Watching the fight, the girl cannot believe that such serious people would do nonsense like this. And Toas is only for happiness. Suddenly, the father shouts out words about how he doesn't believe in all this nonsense like duty and honor, and Kaydell clarifies what he means. Brian then solemnly shouts that there is nothing more important to him in the world than cuteness. Hearing this, the main character is surprised to remember how she created the Duke in her novel. She described him as a man obsessed with cute animals. Even though the Duke was very charismatic, he had an insane weakness for everything cute. However, Jalen admits that in reality, his character turned out to be even stranger than in her web novel. Father says that when Cadel becomes Duke, he will no longer have to use force. The son says that even if this is so, Brian still cannot defeat him. After exchanging sharp phrases for the last time, the men begin to fight, but the Duke deftly dodges the blows, saying that his opponent is too open. Brian then says it's his turn before swinging as hard as he can straight at Cadel. At this time, Toa says that today his father is moving much better, and this is probably due to the fact that his mood has improved after meeting Jalen. Suddenly, during the massacre, one of the men touches the tablecloth with his foot, causing all the food to fall to the floor. This boorish attitude towards food made Evangeline very angry, and she, without hiding her emotions, asks to stop this whole farce. Without letting go of his son from the suffocating embrace, the Duke stared in surprise at the girl. The main character continues to say that they don't even see what they are allowing themselves because they scattered all the food and broke the dishes. Picking up a small piece of carrot from the floor, she says that she doesn't like how they don't value food, being aristocrats. Jelen shows them the carrot and says that she used to eat even less than this piece a day, and she was so poor that she had to scrape by to survive. The girl remembers that in the past, walking down the street, before her eyes, there were a large number of the same hungry children, Suddenly, Evangeline takes and eats a piece of carrot that was recently lying on the floor. By this, she shocks both the Duke, Cadel, and the servants. However, the main character completely ate a piece of the vegetable, after which she smiled sweetly and said that it was delicious for her. She then says that even though the Whitaker family is richer than the rest, they still can't afford to treat food so meanly. At the end of her speech, Jelen hopes that the men understood her and will take this fact into account because they are the owners of these lands. After that, the girl fell onto a chair and covered her face with her hands, not believing that she dared to teach herself to the Duke. She was nervous that if they decided to kick her out, they wouldn't even ask. But Jelen was pleasantly surprised to hear kind words addressed to her. Toas thinks that she is really very smart. The boy says that his teacher told him that a good ruler should take into account the opinions of young people, and all Whitakers follow this rule. The main character pats Toas on the head and advises him to thank the teacher for such advice because he is a wise man. The boy says that this is indeed so, and wonders how she guessed. She says that she has quite a lot of experience with people. Looking at Brian and Kaydell, Jalen believes that these two never learned their lesson. The girl explains once again that adults should not fight in the presence of children, because Toas will also learn this by watching them. Suddenly, Brian laughed so hard that the girl flinched. He says he feels strange because this is his first time being taught by a child. The man thanks Evangeline for her valuable remark, and promises that from now on he will behave with more restraint. Brian also says that he will no longer fight in front of Thoas, after which he asks the girl to have mercy. However, the girl was embarrassed that this was the first time someone was asking for forgiveness in front of her, calling her by her full name and bending her knee. The Duke is very different from other cruel aristocrats. She realizes that by staying with them, her life will not be in danger. Jalen happily agrees with the Duke. The girl understands that even if she does not become part of their noble family, she will be happy here. The Duke couldn't help but hugged sweet Lingling Ling again, causing his son to be dissatisfied. The month flew by quickly. Evangeline, dressed in a beautiful outfit, is waiting for someone in a luxurious room. Mr. Cadle comes to her. The man hopes that he didn't keep her waiting long. Walking along the corridor, Jalen questions him about whether he will also have his first alchemy class, or if he just needs to meet with Elias. Cadel says that she shouldn't rejoice so early, hinting that something is wrong with Elias. The man wanted to say what exactly was wrong with him, but looking at the smiling girl, he didn't do it. The Crown Duke sighed heavily, after which he said that when the main character sees him, she will understand everything herself. Finally, the couple came to the alchemist's office, which was filled with various devices, potions, and tools. Among this diversity stands a man who is intently peering at the papers. 
Kadel is greeted and says he has brought him an assistant. The girl also greets nicely and introduces herself. Suddenly, a not entirely friendly alchemist turns to them. He irritably asks Kadel about what he is trying to achieve. In response, the Crown Duke says that he himself is complaining, which is why he found a worker for him. The girl cannot understand the reason for the alchemist's anger. The man angrily tells Kadel that if he is going to play the fool, he can get out of here. The main character recalls the moment where she, sitting at a table in the garden, listens to Phil's words about how the alchemist is one of those geniuses that are born once every 100 years. The maid says that considering that this guy is a subordinate of the Whitaker family, it is quite possible. Elias is the youngest alchemist in the entire empire, and without any doubt, he is very handsome. Phil says that he may not have the easiest character, but she is sure that training under Elias's wing will benefit the girl. Jalen was interested in her words and asked if becoming an alchemist would really benefit her. The woman says that it's also useful because alchemy is considered a noble matter, which only aristocrats do. Elias also belongs to the nobility. Moreover, even people from the lower class can enter high society by becoming an alchemist. Alchemists are honored to receive a royal order and their salary can be compared to that of a first-class knight. In the Shami Empire, women have a lot of rights and opportunities. They can engage in almost any activity they want. In addition, there are not many alchemists, so for ordinary women, this is considered one of the best jobs. Looking thoughtfully into the cup, the girl concludes that Kadel is going to introduce her to Elias. Jalen gains determination and enthusiasm, and then declares that she is ready to learn alchemy. She remembered all this, looking at the embittered Elias, who drives her and Kadel away while he is still kind. Looking at such a vicious man, Evangeline does not believe that she can become his student. The Crown Duke smiles and says that the alchemist is always so shy and asks Lingling Ling not to worry. But Elias heard everything and irritably asked the man if he had said that about him. Kaidel says it's clear from Jelen that she's smart. Therefore, she invites the alchemist to become her teacher. But he says that this is bullshit and that he promised to bring him an alchemist and not this non-entity, pointing to the girl. The main character did not expect insults, but says that she will study hard so as not to be useless, to which he says that those who are initially incapable of anything are called insignificant. The hereditary duke advises him not to be so confident because it may happen that she will surpass even him, but it's only a joke for Elias to hear the words that someone might be better than him. Jalen begins to get annoyed by his behavior. Kay Dell, patting the girl on the head, says that even if the alchemist behaves rudely, he is still not a bad guy and asks to give him a chance. The main character liked the care from the crown duke. She promises that she will give it her all. Suddenly, something changed in Kaydell. Jalen asked what happened, but the man replied that he would discuss it with her later. Evangeline stared blankly at the departing knight, and Elias began to grumble that he was being forced to do some stupid things again. Suddenly, the alchemist says that the girl's silver hair is extremely unusual, and that in the future, she is certainly destined to become an unsurpassed beauty. The girl was seriously embarrassed by his phrases. She doesn't even know why he started talking about it. Even after some time, looking at the pages of the book, she thinks that it was stupid of him to say such a thing. She believes that Evangeline has nothing but her pretty face, unlike her true appearance from her past life. Jalen stops thinking about everything and closes the book, but realizes that she did not understand anything from what she was supposed to read. Elias approaches her and says that it is useless for her to read books whose meaning she does not understand. He confirms his words that she is useless. The girl believes that it is impossible to become perfect at the very beginning of training, to which he says that everything worked out for him right away. The man boasts that his head contains an incalculable amount of information about atoms and thousands of alchemical reactions. He claims that he can repeat the potion, which he saw only once. Elias says that Jelen is not given this and suggests that she give up and not waste her time. The alchemist reminds him that this was his last warning, but the girl just laughs at him. This angered the hell out of the man. He is furious that Evangeline has the courage to laugh at him. She says that it's very funny for her to hear all this, and that he can't kick her out, and she doesn't want to leave him alone. Elias fell silent, and the girl thought that he was scared, which is what she asked him about. The alchemist says he can't believe such a girl is arguing with him. She remembers that in front of her is actually a brilliant person, and offers to make a bet. Jelen sets the condition that if she loses, she will immediately leave the tower, and if she wins, he will recognize her as his student. The girl believes that her offer is very profitable for both her and him. Elias says he doesn't want to deal with that kind of nonsense and refuses. She asks the guy, 
is he really refusing because he is afraid of losing, to which he says that it's simply not worth it. The man, without any friendliness on his face, decides that this is the end of their conversation. Jalen realizes that everything is much more complicated than she thought, but she does not give up hope and decides to try to get to the other side. She approaches Elias again and says that she is not going to back down, to which he once again asks her to leave him alone. The alchemist reassures her that Kadel will take care of her anyway, but the girl says that she just wants to help all the residents of the duchy. Recalling the moment when she was accepted into the Whitaker family, she says that no one needed her when the Crown Duke took her in. Everyone here was kind to her, and no one mocked her. They accepted her even though they knew about her past. Evangeline admits that she cannot sleep and eat in the palace without doing something for the family in return. She then says that perhaps Mr. Elias doesn't know what gratitude is. The guy got very angry and asked her again, but Jelen said that it was not that important and moved away from the topic. Elias warns that if she says one more word, she will be out the door. She laughs because such a man threatens her. A little girl. She irritably asks the guy, will he send her away now or continue to intimidate her? Jelen says that no matter what happens, no one will suspect him. It would never occur to anyone that a great alchemist could harm someone like her. As soon as the girl told the alchemist that he was also a famous aristocrat, he hesitated, and Evangeline realized that she was able to break him. She recalls that in her short story, Yesterday's Servant Became the Crown Princess, Elias was a rather complex character. Born the third son of the Marquis, he hated small talk and hypocritical aristocrats. And most of all, it was difficult for him to tolerate those who boasted of their power. Therefore, her words that he had great power over her slightly offended him. He says he would never do that. The main character enthusiastically claps her hands and asks for forgiveness if she misunderstood him. She asks if she can stay now. Elias does not understand her, to which she, pacing around the room, says that he himself said that he does not want to make a bet, and she wants to become an assistant in this laboratory. Having noticed some garbage, Jelen says that she is going to throw it away, but the guy orders her not to touch anything. He takes the thing from the girl, because she has no idea how valuable it is. She advises the alchemist to take better care of his things. The young mistress scolds Elias for the mess in his office, in which things are scattered everywhere, dust and even mushrooms grow. Collecting dirt from a bookshelf on her finger, she generally says that she has no idea how anyone can live in this place. But Evangeline reassures the guy that she is now his assistant and will clean his laboratory every day. But he doesn't stop grumbling about the fact that she has no right to touch his equipment and that she deliberately wants to push him, which is basically what she's trying to achieve. For the main character, figuring out Elias was as easy as shelling pears. The laboratory is his sacred place, which he did not allow anyone to take over. Jelen then decides to try again to put pressure on the alchemist, but he gives in and recognizes her as his assistant, but forbids her to touch his things. The man warns that only he sets the rules in his laboratory, after which he says that the girl got the upper hand with her persistence. Then Evangeline hears her victory ring. Elias inquires about the bet she proposed. This makes the girl very happy. She believes that with such terms of the bet, his victory will seem obvious, but if he loses, he will have no choice but to admit it. Jelen says that the conditions are very simple. Over the next week, if he thanks her even once, he will lose. Intimidation and asking for someone's help is prohibited. Elias expresses his hope that the young mistress does not really think of defeating him. The girl believes that she will definitely do it, because people who are confident of victory, like an alchemist, should be extremely careful. She wonders about Elias. His self-confidence cannot be so high as to say every time that she will lose. He advises Jelen to stop provoking him, and says that this bet will help him get rid of her forever. Evangeline says that his confidence is so strong that it is as if he is already preparing to see a new assistant in her place. After talking with Elias, the girl falls tiredly onto her bed. She doesn't understand how she created the characters and why he turned out to be so nasty. She remembered Kadel saying that the alchemist was actually a good guy. The main character believes that everything turned out to be much worse. Jelen also recalls that in the original, Elias was a character who did not show much activity. She doesn't know why everything went wrong. After all, this is supposed to be the world she created, but there are too many changes in the plot. It seems to her that a new character has appeared without her knowledge. Hans enters the room. He wonders whether the young lady has already visited the alchemy tower and whether she managed to get along with Elias, because from his face one can guess his complex character. The main character says that the whole point is that she is not good enough. 
the teacher inspired her to work even harder. The butler asks to inform him when she needs help, because the young master has already given his permission. The girl decides to take advantage of this and asks Hans to tell her something about Elias. Evangeline promises herself that even if she falls with bones, she will still defeat Elias. While drinking tea in a beautiful garden, the main character thinks that she is sleeping. Otherwise, she cannot believe that such an ideal person exists. She reminds herself that she must definitely figure out how to help Elias, because there are only three days left until the end of the bet. The main character recalls how the butler said that he had been serving the alchemist since the first day he found himself in the mansion. Then Hans wonders whether the lady wants to know something about him, or whether he needs something from her. But the girl says that she wants to help him with something, which greatly touches the butler. The man says that Elias would be glad to receive some rare ingredient for his experiments, like tears, or dragon scales, or phoenix feathers. The girl realizes that there is no way she can get these ingredients, so she asks if there is another option. Hans says that, unfortunately, the alchemist doesn't tell much about himself, so he invites the lady to ask someone else about him. Maid Phil, when asked about Elias, suggested that he wanted more free time. Kadel says that Jelen is deluded and does not need talent in order to be successful in alchemy. Toas doesn't understand why the main character needs alchemy at all and offers to play together. Two servants say about Elias that he seems to be perfect from birth and there are days when he especially avoids people. They sympathize with Jelen that she had to make this bet with him. The young lady is upset that no one could help her. She is afraid that she will not be able to become a great magician and that she will be thrown out of here. Suddenly, Ling Ling beckons the duke who was walking towards her. Evangeline bowed politely and said hello, but her mood quickly worsens when she notices Brian Elias next to him. She wonders why he is here. The duke says that they met by chance, and since he became her teacher, he invited him to have a cup of tea together. Jelen smiles at them, but remembers the outcome of the last three days. She should have realized earlier how stupid Elias was. The alchemist, meanwhile, tells the duke that everyone will understand that he cares about Evangeline very much. He claims that anyone, just by looking at them, will be sure that she is Brian's favorite daughter. Jelen is angry and does not understand what the teacher is doing. The duke was embarrassed by the man's words. He asks if he really looks like Ling Ling's dad. Elias says he wouldn't have the courage to lie to him. He is sure that Brian values Evangeline very much. The man gives up and says that it is so. He doesn't understand how the alchemist was able to figure him out, then asks what he wanted to tell him. The alchemist asks you to listen to him carefully. He knows that his lordship loves all sorts of cute things so much that he is even ready to take a stray cat into his family. Jalen, who thought that the guy meant her by the stray cat, became very angry. Elias advises the duke to take good care of his newly arrived girl, while the main character thinks that he is still trying to kick her out of the tower. Evangeline, skillfully hiding her raging anger, sweetly says that she didn't even suspect that the teacher was so worried about her. He, who also harbors a deep dislike for Ling Ling, says that he could not feel otherwise. While the main character and the alchemist exchange disapproving glances, Brian clarifies that Evangeline was supposed to start working as his assistant. Suddenly the Duke says that he knows that the teacher again wants to offer him something. Elias says that his lordship is hard to deceive and that it is so. He decides to tell it straight like it is. The alchemist's words surprise the main character. He offers the Duke to adopt Evangeline. After tea, the girl catches up with the guy in the garden and says that by providing her with such help, he dragged the duke into their dispute. Elias wonders if she would be better off as the adopted daughter of the Whitaker family. Jelen realizes that this will be good for her, because thanks to this she will be able to avoid death in this story. And it was precisely in order to become the adopted daughter of the duke that she searched so diligently for Thoas. However, remembering other close people in the mansion, the girl says that she will thank Brianna by becoming a great alchemist. Evangeline declares with full confidence that one day she will be able to surpass even Elias. The guy is not happy with this, and he complains that she has the courage to talk to her teacher like that. She laughs because she was able to hurt his feelings. The man advises her not to worry about this, because no matter how you look at it, she will soon be thrown out of the tower. The girl left the teacher thinking that his words would never come true, and she just needed to make him thank her. Before the main character has time to feel sad that nothing is working out for her yet, she suddenly notices a glimpse of a strand of turquoise hair. Evangeline screams because the same asshole from the corridor is in front of her again. Calling the girl the author, the green-haired man says that he is glad that she remembered him. After elegantly kissing Jelen's hand, the stranger introduces himself to her by the name Eokalia. 
but she pulls her hand away and asks him to first tell who he is, because she doesn't remember that a person like him worked in the palace. Yakalia asks the lady if she knows anything about Kalianism. Jalen says she knows about her. There is no one who has not heard at least once about the main religion of the Shami Empire. The stranger rejoices and says that his name is Jokalia, and he is the god of this religion. An awkward silence hung between them, after which the girl said that no one would believe such stories, and Iakalia claims that his words are the pure truth. However, God cites as evidence that he knows that the main character is the author, who unexpectedly found herself in another world. The words of the green-haired man make Jalene's blood freeze with horror. He knows that this world is very similar to the one described in the novel, but for some reason, it is different. Iokalia once again says that he is glad to meet the author and introduces himself as the creator of this world. The girl asks God whether he called her into this world, to which Iokalia apologizes and offers her compensation. But Jalen did not hear his words. Her heart sank. For a long time she had hatred for the god of this world, and now he appeared before her, and it confused her. She didn't know why she ended up in the novel and became the villain Evangeline. All aggression from others was directed at her. The main character tried very hard to survive in the body of the villain. She is angry that God dared to appear before her just like that and ask for forgiveness. She scolds Iokalia for ruining other people's lives for the sake of his whim and then acting as if nothing happened. Jelen is unhappy that God had the courage to appear before her eyes now, but when she needed help, he was not there. The man with a sparkling smile clarifies that Evangeline is his favorite character. Iokalia says that he recently took on the role of God, but in order to become a real Lord, he had to pass many exams. And creating a new world was the last test in the exam. He had to create a new world, but nothing came to mind. That's why God started reading all sorts of short stories. Then he found a novel that became his favorite. Yesterday's servant became the crown princess. As a fan, he wanted to give Evangeline a happy ending. If he had been the author, he would certainly have made a good ending for her. God admits that his desire to achieve the ideal was too strong, but he failed. Now the main character understands why he moved her soul here. The girl knows that he took her short story as the basis for the world and does not wonder why this world is still so different from the original. Iokalia says that this is all because he changed some things to his liking. Jalen wanted to make a scandal again, but pulled herself together, because in the original story, she would have died. But since this world is a parody, then she has a chance to survive. She was very angry when she was forced to eke out a miserable existence as a slave, but now it would be best to try to achieve a happy ending. Suddenly, Evangeline realizes that this is the first time she has met a fan of her novel. The girl decides to ask God how many chapters of her novel he bought and how much he paid for them. Jokalia says that he did not pay anything, but was waiting for all the chapters to become free. The main character is unhappy with this, but is also interested in whether he left comments on her work. The deity says that he did not do this either, because he was very busy with work. Jelen can't stand it, and is angry with the man because he dared to call her novella her favorite, but was too lazy to even write a comment, and even plagiarized her novella. God makes eyes at her and says that she is too cruel. She says that he has no idea how important likes and comments are for writers. Evangeline continues the opera about how he can't even understand how depressing it is that there is no reaction to the chapters. Iokalia lowers her head in front of the main character and asks for forgiveness. Then he decides, instead of empty words, to do something for her as an apology. The girl was interested in his proposal, to which he said that for this he would give up his dream and upset the balance of this world. The mistress warns that she does not need his empty excuses, and she has nothing to talk to him about if he is not capable of anything, but the deity says that he will do everything possible and offers her to become immortal or not to age. Jalen is not very surprised by this. Iokalia tells Evangeline that he can make her the strongest female knight in the empire, but she refuses because she hates cruelty. Then God invites her to become a saint with incredible healing powers, but the girl says that she doesn't even want to hear about it. The man offered her teleportation, which Jelen initially dismissed, but then thought that this was not a bad option. The main character rudely asks if he plans to renege on his words, to which God rudely says no. Then she decides to approach this thoroughly, because Iokalia himself admitted that he stole her web novel in order to pass the exam, and now he pretends that everything created here belongs to him. Evangeline emphasizes that he plagiarized in order to create a world in which he would be comfortable. The girl begins to threaten. Chaos will begin when it turns out that God stole her soul and placed it in the body of a villain. 
The moment she started talking about the fact that everyone could find out that a low-level god had failed the exam, Iokalia closed her mouth and asked her not to drive her horses. With shaking hands, the man says that he will feel bad when everyone finds out that he did not have enough imagination to create a world. Jelen confirms this and says that he should also be careful with her, because who knows what could happen. The next moment, not a trace of the mistress's anger remained. She sets the condition that if she needs him in the future, he must appear at the first call. Iokalia was surprised by her proposal, but she said that he could not refuse, because her presence here already violated the rules of the exam. She forces God to agree to her condition, but the man says that he will be very busy, so he offers to meet only once a year. They started arguing about how often Jalen could call upon the god. Such options were considered every six months or every second month. As a result, the man agreed with her that they would see each other every four months, after which he got ready to leave the girl. However, Evangeline stopped him and said that she had one more thing to do with him. The main character says that this is nothing special, but this case is important to her because it relates to her sense of self-worth. On a beautiful sunny day, Alchemist Elias writes in his notebook about his 78th day of experiment. The records describe how, after he separated the iguana scales from the body, he mixed them with goblin tears. Then, after grinding the glass into dust, he mixed everything with the forest of eternal winter glue, after which there was the last step. The man prayed to God that this time he would succeed, but unfortunately, there was a small explosion and nothing big happened. At this moment, Jelen comes into the office, she tells Elias that he still has to fail, even though he calls himself a great alchemist. The man says that it seems to him that every day his assistant is becoming more impudent, but he declares that no matter what, he will soon throw her out of here. The girl says that they will look at this later. The main character, opening the window for ventilation, says that tomorrow the alchemist will change his mind about her. Elias says that the only future she has is one where she disappears from his tower the very next day. Jelen advises him not to worry. Even if she disappears, it will only be of her own free will and after she wins the argument. The alchemist asks her to put aside her self-confidence and tell her how she plans to win, to which she says that it is not important. Evangeline says that even if he finds out about her plans, he still won't be able to change anything. She said goodbye and left the office, leaving Elias alone to sweat profusely from his worries about his victory. Joyfully running down the corridor, the girl remembers all the ingredients that the teacher used. Iguana claws, goblin tears, crushed glass, and the forest of eternal winter. She dances happily on the bed because such an obvious combination will help create that very drug, and what Yokalia said is true. Jelen remembers how God gave her the power, thanks to which she can create any drug she wants and become an alchemical genius in this world. She asks God if she just needs to think in order to create an artifact. Yokalia says that this is true, but she still needs to know all the necessary ingredients. Moreover, she will have the opportunity to see the composition of any potion. Before leaving, the man smiles and says that this is divine power. Looking at her hands, gifted with such strength, Jelen admires this, because even Elias sometimes fails in his experiments. She doesn't understand what exactly he wanted to create, but he remembers that he talked about some kind of medicine, which is why he thinks that it is a healing potion. While Evangeline assumes that this is how she imagined it, someone knocked on her room. It turns out to be the maid Phil, who goes to her mistress not empty-handed. When the girl asks what she brought, the woman replies that these are gifts from Brian, who bought her new things so that she would not suffer in the heat. Phil reads out a letter from the Duke, in which he writes that it is getting hotter outside, so she needs to properly prepare for the summer. The main character sheepishly says that she already bought summer clothes last week. The maid reports that in his lordship's opinion, the young lady's wardrobe should include more clothes. But Evangeline says that she already has a lot of things, to which Phil replies that the Duke still thinks that she is missing something. The girl remembers that in the original Brian was so generous, but for her this is too much. Phil advises the lady not to worry about this, after which he reminds her of her bet with Elias, which ends tomorrow. The woman wonders if she has come up with something to win. The maid admits that she of course believes Jelen, but Elias is still an individualist and moreover very demanding. She asks the mistress what she will do if she loses. This question made the main character think, because she had never thought about it. After Iokalia awarded her talent, some surprises happen every time. Realizing that she missed the most difficult question, the girl falls into a stupor because she does not know what to do in this case. Remembering God's words that when he created this world, he wanted Evangeline to be able to achieve happiness, Jelen decides that she most likely will not be executed. 
She assumes that this way she doesn't have to become the Duke's adopted daughter, but that's the main reason she's here. Maid Phil decides to cheer up the girl. She says that nothing bad will happen if she fails to become an alchemist. The woman reports that the Duke and his sons said that there was nothing wrong with it. Jelen hears Phil's very pleasant words that everyone here has opened their hearts to her. She can't believe her ears and asks again. The maid says that this is indeed the case, and that even the eldest son, who is usually reluctant to show sympathy to others, everyone knows that he has difficulty trusting people, so they were surprised when he brought the young miss here. This was the first time he brought someone to the palace. The main character says that she did not know about this, to which Phil says that this is not surprising, because the Crown Duke does not really show it. The girl asked why they chose her, when suddenly the woman burst into tears because she remembered something. Evangeline is afraid that she has accidentally reminded her of something bad. The maid says that this is not true at all, but believes that it would be better for Kadel himself to tell the story. After all, it is possible that right now the young master hopes to meet Jelen. Kaidel's deceased mother had a best friend, an empress named Sien. Once upon a time, she was only their servant. But now, she is the greatest woman in the entire empire. Sienna wanted to fill the void in the boy's heart after the death of her mother. Perhaps that is why, having met Jilin, the servant girl, and seeing her determined look, he began to mentally try to find that woman in her. The main character believes that Kaidel misses his mother very much, and that is why he brought her to his mansion. Jelen, coming to the crown duke in the greenhouse, calls him handsome. But in her thoughts, she does not understand what worries her so much. Admiring the beautiful flower beds, the girl admires the fact that she didn't even know that such a wonderful place existed here. She shares her worries about whether everything will be okay if they find out that they are meeting here. The man says that she has nothing to worry about because his desire is enough. Evangeline says it's wonderful and admits that it's her first time in a greenhouse, in which, moreover, such a wonderful table with treats has been prepared. The main character then wonders if it could be that Kadel prepared all this for her. The man says that she can consider this an unwritten rule and that the greenhouses always have snacks prepared for two people. When asked why he called Evangeline here, Kadel says that he just wanted to know how things were going with her. The girl innocently agrees with him, to which he asked what was the matter. Jalen said she didn't want to insist. As soon as the girl arrived, she immediately noticed his reddened eyes. She thinks it's because he was thinking about sad childhood memories. Evangeline asks his lordship to let her know when he is ready to talk. Kadel says that she has grown up, to which she agrees, because she is already 15 years old. Calling the man handsome, Jelen says that she has become quite an adult. Suddenly, the crown duke changes the topic of conversation. He asks not to call him that anymore. She doesn't understand what he means. The man explains that she always calls him handsome and asks him not to do that again. The young lady asks the obvious question. What should she call him then? The crown duke blushed even more when he said that Jalen always calls him either fashionable or handsome. The man asked to call him simply by his name, but the girl was very surprised by this. Then Kadel decided to change his mind. Thinking he was being too picky, he asked Evangeline to just call him Kyle. Jelen can't believe that he wanted to be called simply by his first name, because they are not even related to him. The main character remembers the words of the maid Phil, who said that everyone loves her and that she is very important to everyone in the Whitaker mansion. The girl realizes that the plot is very different from the original and that she has become the main character of the story. She has incredible abilities in alchemy, which she has never even studied before. Eokalia said they are unique. She decides that if now everyone in the mansion respects her and she managed to win their hearts, then she will easily achieve her goal. Evangeline, believing that this was indeed the case, became eager to stay in this mansion. Her thoughts were interrupted by Kadel, who asked why she was silent. Jalen says she would like to ask something first. She wonders why he took her. Jelen says that Hans and Phil also thought about it, and they said that the young master brought someone to his home for the first time. The girl wanted to say that everyone thought that Kadel had opened his heart to her, when suddenly the man angrily interrupted her. The crown duke said that it was all nonsense, and she shouldn't worry about it. Jelen did not expect such rudeness in her direction. She asks the man for forgiveness for expecting too much and being so arrogant. She says that thinking about this, apparently, is wasting her time and does not keep track of the clock at all. Evangeline says that her Madame Phil is probably tired of waiting, so she should leave. She feels strange. Nothing bad happened, but her eyes are wet. Even after meeting Iokalia, she didn't feel that way. Evangeline leaves, unable to believe that she managed to fall in love with Kadel in the short time they were together. However, the man grabs the young lady's hand 
and says that he did not mean to offend her. He asks the girl to stop crying, to which she, wiping her tears, says that she is fine. The Crown Duke asks the main character for forgiveness for neglecting her. He admits that he behaved this way because she reminds him of someone dear to him, 